fully modular interior, beautiful exterior, and completely silent. The Definer 5 from Fractal Design. Link in the description for pricing and availability. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks and the Titan X is without a doubt the GPU that's driving proper 4K gaming into reality. After the launch of the GTX 980, we knew that full Maxwell potential was still to be realized. At 999, the Titan X is aimed at enthusiast gamers offering fully unlocked GM200 core. And Nvidia is once again with a tagline of the world's fastest GPU, aimed to introduce a new performance king into the current market equation. And it would be really interesting to see how AMD will respond to compete directly with the Titan X. Loaded with 3072 CUDA cores, 96 ROPs, 192 texture units, 12 GB of VRAM on a 384-bit memory bus with 1000 MHz base clock and 1075 MHz boost and 7010 MHz effective on the memory. With a controlled TDP of 250 watts for this powerhouse, so the efficiency of Maxwell architecture really shines through every release. So the 12 GB of VRAM is really targeted to eliminate any memory capacity and bandwidth limitations, and not so much for current gaming titles, but we suspect for near future VR applications. And unlike other Titans, the Titan X does not offer full speed double precision performance. So it's actually right in line with gaming oriented cards like the GTX 980. But for developers that crave double precision, be prepared to pay for the Quadro equivalent card. The reference blower style cooler has not changed aside from the new black color scheme that looks awesome with Titan silver text at the front of the card and illuminated GeForce GTX at the top. I just wish a backplate was included like on the GTX 980 because that would turn the Titan X into one of the best looking reference GPUs on the market. But with the black PCB exposed you can see all the 12 VRAM modules, two SLI fingers because running Titan X in SLI would be totally boss. For power requirements you'd need 6 plus 8 pin PCI Express and for display connectivity we have a single HDMI 2.0, a single DVI and three DisplayPort outputs. Uh, an identical configuration found on the GTX 980. And starting with some 1440p benchmarks, the Titan X is the performance king for single GPU gaming, staying well above GTX 980 and right below the R9 295X2 and even in some titles beating the 295X2. Moving on to UHD resolutions and all those extra CUDA cores and VRAM certainly comes into play, delivering impressive minimum frame rates and totally playable average uh, frame rates as well at these high settings. And of course the full 12 gigabytes of memory is far from utilized since most games don't require anything above 4 gigabytes. Power consumption for the Titan X is beyond impressive, actually consuming less watts at load than an R9 290X, delivering quieter operation at load than the 290X as well and staying at consistent 81 degrees Celsius at constant load. Overclocking potential is there, expect about a 10% boost on the core and 15% on the memory that account to for about uh, 4 to 5 extra frames on average. Now given Nvidia's current efficiency lead, they are able to charge whatever they want for the Titan X as competition from AMD is not yet caught up. Um, you can pick up the 295X2 for around $699, but Crossfire profiles and Radeon driver updates are lagging behind with terrible performance at higher resolution as you saw in our benchmarks. And here is an overview of performance difference between all the current high-end GPUs and the Titan X and the results speak for themselves. It is an impressive performer, it's expensive, but the Titan X is still damn good. Now for me as a video editor, I also wanted to compare the Titan X to my GTX 980 with Adobe CC applications that utilize CUDA acceleration. Now to my disappointing surprise, the Titan X finished the Premiere render only 44 seconds faster than the GTX 980, which is nothing really on a total 30 minute render. So an upgrade to a Titan X for your Adobe needs is 
right now irrelevant as it cannot take advantage of all the available VRAM nor the CUDA cores. So that concludes our review of the Titan X. Make sure to visit our website with a link below uh, to get more information on a full written review of this GPU. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content and we'll see you in the next one.